Hey everybody, welcome back. It is Friday. Cheers to the weekend. I'm Sue Moy Tovez and we are back with Sipping with Sue time. So I hope you guys are grabbing a drink, getting cozy, relaxing, and doing our happy hour time where you can just de-stress, let the entire week go away, and we're just going to chat with real people doing real things extraordinarily. And this week we are speaking with Corey Ann Villegas from Ono oh Pine Kitchen out in Aloha. Aloha, out in South Dakota, correct? No, we're in Nebraska. Nebraska, man, it's like all of those states clustered together. Oh, I'm not good okay. with geography. I just figured out what the state flag looks like, what, last year? So you're okay. Because <laughs> when you guys moved, it was like South Dakota, North Dakota, Nebraska, I'm not sure. No. Nope. <laughs> So they are um, out there in Nebraska, bringing mm -hmm. a little aloha to Nebraska. So welcome. We are um, celebrating Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month for the month of May. And so we brought you guys on just to give us a little um, background and a little, little bit of what you guys are doing in Nebraska. So let's go. And you actually are in the restaurant right now, correct? Yes. So I apologize for all the yelling, but that's our... This is our environment. We just mm -hmm. yell at all our customers that come in. Hi, Megan. Hi, Jill. <laughs> so, <laughs> we just say hi. We're very family oriented here. So I love it. I love it. So we met. Um, let's give our folks a little bit of background on, on when we met. Um, how long ago did we meet? Oh, I'm pretty sure I was the probably third grade, right? So back in <laughs> 03. I think it was over three back in um, Parliament. So yeah, back in Parliament. We were stationed together. Uh, yes, but not yes. me, but my dad was stationed the same base as you guys were at. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So we met in Parliament, and Corey was like this, this big. This I big. Was, I was scared back then too. So <laughs> you were, you were. Um, so and it's funny because Chance was like, "Oh, you mean Lilo and Stitch?" Uh. <laughs> That movie came out and everyone was all about like, he looked just like Lilo. I'm like, sure, guys, thanks. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, we have Corey here and she, yeah, we met so long ago um, uh, back at Halloween. And I remember your mom, because uh, Chance and I were by ourselves and mm -hmm. your mom was just like, I like to take in all the strays and feed them. <laughs> So well, she used whenever, to cook back then, like, a yeah, lot. Yeah, so. whenever mom cooks, too, and I think, I don't know if it's just an Asian thing, but we don't know how to portion. So it's always going to be a big portion. Like, See? even in college, I did the same thing. I didn't know how to cook for just four of us. Oh, wow. So did you inherit your mom's, uh, your mom's flair for cooking also? No, I only know how to make anything with ground beef. Um, <laughs> So like meatloaf, um, going nachos. I can do I can do a local moco using Salisbury okay. steak. Okay. So that's a little bit of simpler, but I'm more of a baker, so I do a lot of the desserts for the restaurant. Okay. So um, tell me about how how the family got together with starting to like when um, your mom started cooking. Like so, when did she decide that she she really liked cooking and and it was something that was um, you know uh, something she may want to pursue. For as long as I remember, cooking has been a big deal for her. Um, she's always made the Filipino egg rolls, the lumpia, so that I remember growing up. I mean, um, even at school, she will come in and teach my class how to make cinnamon twists. That was a big deal because I felt like I can actually do something in class. I'm like, oh, I can help everyone else. But I know mom said she's been cooking since middle school, especially because she had a lot of siblings. I think she grew up with about six siblings. So, and um, grandparents are both teachers. So whenever they come home, they go help cook. And she also did McDonald's for college <laughs> for her job. So to make money and she got to learn some other stuff there too. She even competed at one of, when McDonald's used to do their competitions, she competed at like a burger flipping competition. But she's been cooking since middle school for her, but passionate about food. She's always catered for people. And I think that's also another way of us having our friends over and just being like a bonding experience. So food, always important for her. <laughs> yes, and yeah, you're right. It does bring everybody together as far as it goes with family and then extended mm -hmm. family, like uh, what we like to call family, right? You guys. Yeah. Yeah. took us in and it was just like we always bonded over food yeah you're definitely part of the ohana when you come <laughs> over for food and if you make at least three trips for a plate then you're for sure ohana that means you can eat. <laughs> yeah no no need to be shy right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
So when did um, when did you guys start thinking about opening a restaurant? Oh man! So when we moved here to Nebraska back, I think I was here in 2013, and my mom and dad got here around 2014. So mom started doing the uh, farmers market, the local farmers market. She did one in Bellevue, which is where our uh, restaurants located, and we did one at Papillion, which is where our house is at. So we started doing a farmers market. And we started simple with like the pan de sal, which is a Filipino dinner rolls. We did the ensaymada, which is the bread with butter and sugar. We did some Hawaiian desserts, very simple items. And a lot of people started liking our food. They're like, oh my gosh. Like we started having weekly customers that came every time, like loyal customers. And then slowly we started adding some like pancit, which is the Filipino noodles, actual like bento lunches. And they're like, you guys need a storefront. You guys need a storefront. We've done it for about two or three years. And then finally, my mom's friend, um, her name is Carol Blood. She's one of the state senators, mm -hmm. hooked us up and said, hey, I found you guys a place. <laughs> so they're like, let's do this. Let's just try it. So mom's like, let's explore. Let's just, why not? I don't work anymore as a teacher, so <laughs> let's just do it. <laughs> So how was how was that doing the farmers market? I mean, I'm I'm sure you you were able to touch base with a lot of different folks coming in and out of there to build your you know your steady stream of of, of uh, you know um, customers that were going to be repeat customers. For sure, of for sure. So the farmers market was really great. We met a lot of people, and that still come to the restaurant to this day. Um, they're very friendly, and we even hooked up with this lady who had her own restaurant. So we did a little pop-up events at her restaurant okay. as a first start. So we met a lot of people there. We've hooked up with vendors as well. Uh, for instance, we have this lady. Her name is Rachel. I forgot the husband's name, but she owns a company called DH Longhorn, and they supply us with like beef. So like they have their own farm, and they will give us like a whole cow. So we met through them. Like we learned um, other different vendors, and like. Nebraska is very much about support local, so mm -hmm. we do that very, very much. And just meeting like the company, like not the company, but the environment here, like everyone here is so nice. The population is amazing. Like sometimes I say there's more Aloha spirit here okay. than it does okay. in Hawaii. So oh, yes, wow. the community, very community here. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So when you're saying you get the whole cow, I mean, we all know that Nebraska has some of the best steaks. <laughs> oh, I, so we have Omaha steaks. Like that's yes. what they're known for. However, DH Longhorn, you can taste the grass. Like it's so, it's so good. Oh, wow. oh, <laughs> it's wow. really good. You do not have to season the steaks. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so was it hard to get everything started as far as the restaurant goes once you did decide to do a brick and mortar? How hard think, was that? I think the hard part more for my mother was like finding all of the licenses and dealing with the billing at that part. For instance, we found this restaurant. It was a pretty good find. It's in the middle of an old town. So Old Town Bellevue is where we're located. Mm -hmm. It's a little old town because everywhere else is super expensive and it's very competitive. Um, the licensing here in Omaha, the tax is pretty high. So mm -hmm. Bellevue wasn't bad. And like we're thinking, oh, why not stay here? Because this is where our farmer's market started, was our mm -hmm. first farmer's market in Bellevue. So a lot of elder communities. So we thought, we'll just stay here. It's easier for them. But the taxes in Nebraska is a little different. Um, mm -hmm. And even our building, it's actually two buildings in one. So we're paying for two electricity bills. <laughs> so Ooh. yeah. <laughs> so it's very, it's things like that, it was hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. And especially Omaha. Um, is known for growing in the food community. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of fusion restaurants that are growing. I know there's a restaurant called Hawaiian Bros coming into town, mm -hmm. but we're the only restaurant here that's Hawaiian and Filipino that's not fusion. So okay. we have that. Given the Hawaiian food is kind of fusion, so <laughs> we have that <laughs> style of food. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So um, so picking the location was not too difficult because you already had the farmer's market. You've established your, your kind of place over there. Yes. And then also with the, the, the community that you had there. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you, you said you did have kind of a niche with the fusion. How many fusion places are there? I mean, it, outside Ooh. of, um, you know, because you've got the Hawaiian Filipino, and I think that's mm -hmm. your niche, right? Yes. Um, is there some other like how how hard is you said it's like competitive but like how competitive you know it's, in a sense like we're not we don't worry too much there is a couple mm -hmm. other restaurants that are do filipino food but the thing is we tell people my mom is tagalog she also does not she's allergic to shrimp so she does mm -hmm. not cook with the filipino patis which has like shrimp sauce mm -hmm. so there's other filipinos that are more um like kapapangan and they also have like ilocano so there's a couple others mm -hmm. um but we have our own because we're the hawaiian filipino 
Do I say competition in a sense because Omaha is again growing and we're mm -hmm. the community in Omaha is very like the hipster, we're gonna be trendy mm -hmm. and try these new things versus where we're at, a lot of these customers are loyal, they come every week. Mm -hmm. So Omaha is just that hard in a sense of they wanna try new things, they're not gonna always try and come back. Mm -hmm. Um Omaha is also known for like the bar for like Seen. bars and uh -huh. beer. Mm -hmm. okay. We do have a lot of fusion restaurants in Omaha, but again, a lot of people don't come back to those often. Mm -hmm. It's more of like once a month kind of deal. We have a place called Umami, which is a good friend of ours down the road, mm -hmm. but they do like the typical Chinese, Japanese food. Uh, there's a lot of Vietnamese stores here as well, or mm -hmm. restaurants. So we have like a lot of pho, even the casino I go to on the weekend has pho at late at night. So I go That's to awesome. that. Oh, it's great. You know, gamble and eat pho. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, late night and then pho, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really good, but we don't feel that has much competition. If anything, a lot of it's more support. It's mm -hmm. just, it'll be harder in the area of Omaha versus where we're located because okay. we are the only restaurant like this, pretty much mm -hmm. in the east side of Nebraska. Mm -hmm. But it's just the community and people also, Omaha is a college town, so people are students and then they leave. So it's not going to always be the same people. <laughs> the same customer base. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, so what can it, what can folks expect when they actually come into your restaurant? Cause you know, my husband, um, he was able to, he was able to come <laughs> out and visit. Came. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was able to come out and, and check out, check out the, uh, the place and stuff. And so, um, mm -hmm. and he came back, of course, Yes, he came home, uh, flight and all. He's like, I only brought a carry on. And then <laughs> she gave me all this food to give to you. And I was like, that's okay. That's how that's how they roll. <laughs> well, if people are going to come and visit, expect that we are loud <laughs> for one. We're going to treat you like family. We're not going to be like, oh, welcome. We It's a very family-oriented restaurant. We kind of oh have some God. yelling, but it's more of a friendly yell, <laughs> like a typical <laughs> Asian family. Um, we we're also very laid back. So a lot of people would sit down and think we're serving them. We're very chill. Come up, kind of like a McDonald's would. You come up and order. If you have questions, we're more than welcome to answer because our foods are different. So mm -hmm. we understand a lot of people don't get what the food is. Um, we have all those questions. Like if you want to try it, let us know. COVID's mm -hmm. a little different right now, but we'll definitely let you sample something if you like. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of breads. We want you to be happy. So we want you to try the food and make sure everything is still good when you, after you order it. But we're mm. very laid back here. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, the, again, the aloha. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very aloha. That's awesome. So what else? Um, so you guys are located near the base too, right? Yes. So do you we're have a lot of um, influx of military personnel that are just like, man, I really miss Hawaii. Thank yeah. you for being here. Yeah. We have like the military people come by and we're about 10 minute drive less than that from the base. Mm -hmm. So they'll come in and before COVID hit, we used to do a buffet just for lunchtime on Tuesdays. And okay. not many restaurants are open on Tuesdays and Mondays. So we had a buffet and most of them are military guys. And then, you know, even though it's buffet, you can go ahead and take some home. So you have like your own box lunch, you ate, and you also bring some for dinner. So Which never really happens good. in any restaurant <laughs> ever. <laughs> to make sure people are not leaving hungry so and most of our food are served in takeout especially now so that way you have some food to take home so that brings up another point so for covid and the covid restrictions that are in nebraska right now where you are so there's no dine-in right now um, currently. so we have dine-in our state is pretty lenient right now um however we still require masks in our restaurant so we do ask people to wear masks um, I think we're at 50%. We've removed a lot of tables. We're actually below 50 if, you do, if we actually calculated it. But we have um, spread out our tables. We do have outdoor seating available. And we still do contactless um, delivery. If people want delivery, but pick up if they want it. So okay. people are still can do pre-orders. And we have people, we can drop off the food outside once they arrive. And they can pick it up out of their car or we can drop it off to their car. Mm -hmm. So we still have those available to those. Again, we have older com communities. So we try to let them be comfortable when they come here. Gotcha. So, so mm -hmm. how, how hard was it for you guys specifically when COVID did hit last year? I think it was just more difficult with the planning. So it's just more of like, oh no, how are we going to do it? Are we going to have people come in here scared to come back or anything mm -hmm. like that? But we never closed. So okay. We, just, okay. we just did what we had to do was remove tables. Mm -hmm. We had our delivery and everything like that. And there's my mom in the background. <laughs> she can't hear you, but you can say, you can wave if you like. But um, yeah, so everything for COVID-wise, we just fixed everything. She said hello. <laughs> okay. 
I love it. Yes. Um, so you just, so it, you guys were one of the lucky ones. Um, how, how did you see other businesses hit? Cause I know around here, um, you know, we used to frequent a few places that we really, really loved. And then we came back when we actually ventured out and were able to, you know, when we felt comfortable as a family to go travel out again, um, we sure. went out and went to go check out some of the places that we used to, you know, have a glass of wine at or have, you know, go have brunch and they were closed. And so how do you, I think you see a lot of that also outside of your business, but um, your surrounding um, neighbors and stuff. Yeah, we, I know like for Hawaii, so we still keep in touch with those back at home. I know Hawaii lost a lot of businesses mm -hmm. given that their rules were a lot more stricter than ours um, mm -hmm. when it came to the government. They pretty much had to close down and then people couldn't afford it. Uh, we have a few of our friends who actually lost their businesses here. So back to, um, we have one of my uncles had an Asian restaurant in Omaha. Mm -hmm. But sadly, he had to close because the rent was just too high and no one was coming out. So mm -hmm. we're lucky enough. We also do catering. So that was mm -hmm. another thing. People were able to order from us still online. Okay. And then we did like baby showers, birthdays, and people just like for their family just want to have some like catered food. So we oh, did wow. do that for them. Mm -hmm. so and they still fantastic. had weddings that had to cancel too. So uh -huh. a lot of their ven like a lot of their venues had to cancel on them or they just couldn't change their date. So we actually catered for them as well. Okay. Okay. So your so the bulk of your business um, survival mode for COVID was probably a lot of those. Um, yeah. Okay. Because we did gotcha. lose our buffet. That was the one thing we had to take out. So we mm -hmm. couldn't do all you can eat buffet anymore. Mm -hmm. But um, we even did a special takeout order for one of the holidays. So people mm -hmm. just came in and just picked up order. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a couple of private parties when Nebraska was allowed to open up a little bit more people. So a lot mm -hmm. of that really helped. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Well, and then how long, um, how long have you guys been open in it in your entirety? It's like when did Since you our farmer's market business? So, no, your brick and mortar. Restaurant. The, okay, the actual so restaurant. this one, the actual restaurant opened in January. I think we just made two years. So, okay. Yeah. Or no, 2018. Oh my gosh. I'm, oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> She said while. she's getting old, and we just, we just literally, these kids, I tell you, um, just had a chance over here to say hello, because again, they used to hang out, and, and, and she's like, you're not, old, or you're looking old, wait, no, I'm older than you, no, you're older than me, and then it's, oh my gosh, you guys, my if you're, if you're old, laughing. then how old am I? <laughs> Still young. Oh my gosh, oh yeah, my so gosh. We, I want to say we started back in 2018. I want to say so. Okay. Okay, so then you established mm -hmm. 2018 and then had 2019 fully vetted and then 2020 hit and it was like, we yes. gotta make adjustments. But it's good yeah. that you guys were able to survive and kind of just reinvent um, you know, the way of how you need to do business now with the mm -hmm. COVID environment, as opposed to, again, some of those businesses, like the ones we really thought would be here and they're not here anymore. So that, you know, yeah. that's really good on you guys. Yeah, awesome. we also did a lot of events too. I've failed to mention, but we used to do lumpia wrapping. We were supposed to have an annual luau. Uh, yeah. We also did a kamayan, but when COVID hit, when it was still early on, we tried our best to like do the whole entire social distancing and mm -hmm. everything. We mm -hmm. got to split our lumpia class into two different classes, mm -hmm. so we did that. But yeah, it's been a little tough ride, but I feel as if it didn't hurt us too much because we're still doing what we're doing, just a little bit changes. Okay, so what do you what we, what will you guys be doing for for this month for May um, for Asian oh. American Pacific Islander Heritage yeah. Month? May so, has so you been can't do tough. a luau. So I mean, are you gonna are you guys doing anything else or? So sadly, we can't have live music like we would have wanted because normally I would perform hula. Um, we have a live oh, yeah. band and everything, but COVID <laughs> is just preventing all of that. Yeah. Um, but so we're hoping to have like a special dinner. So. Every Friday night, our dinner is a different menu, but we're mm -hmm. hoping to do something more concentrated into like the really Asian foods. Like, for instance, Chinese New Year, I made the gao, which is that Chinese uh, mochi. Mm -hmm. So I've done that. So we're hoping to do something and like maybe bring different kind of buns or we haven't mm -hmm. got quite the menu yet, but we're going to try and do something more of the authentic part of the more authentic part of the Asian food. So something more familiar for everyone else. If not, we're going to have a special dessert. It's just mm -hmm. been really tough because we haven't been at the restaurant this month, mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty mm -hmm. much. We did close for a week, and then we're closing again towards the end of the month because mm -hmm. we're all going on a field trip to Hawaii, so oh, it's nice. going to be a time. <laughs> okay, so we're we're not really, we're not going to be sympathetic to you guys because you're going to Hawaii. <laughs> 
<laughs> we'll, bring, we'll send some pictures over. We can send you some sand. <laughs> oh, thanks. You know, we want some food and we want the sun and the ocean and everything else that goes along oh, with Hawaii. <laughs> I know. We, I just came back from a couple of days ago and I didn't even get a tan. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. The vlog yeah. was strong. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, yeah, that's why you have to do a redo. So you got to go back yes. there and... <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and tan. I'll get all my food. Yeah, and... I'm actually gonna go to the beach for once because I did not go to the beach this last time. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, and my first stop whenever I get to Hawaii, I need to go get malasadas. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of there's a lot of malasada trucks now. I, I just passed, love that. Yeah, I passed by the Target I used to go to all the time, and there's like six malasada trucks. So I was like, oh, this is not normal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember this being there. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> That's too funny. So, hey, do you have anything else to add with um, that you would want anybody to know about the restaurant and about what you guys are doing um, in Nebraska? Yeah, so we're very laid back. We're stuck here in Nebraska because my family followed me from college because I graduated at Creighton. So we're very like we're very about Creighton and UNO students because I'm a grad and my sister's graduating from UNO. So we do give student discount here and military discount here and there too. Mm -hmm. um, we're very laid back people. Come and try our food. Again, our menu is different every Friday night. So we want you to try different Filipino dishes and local Hawaiian dishes. Um, we also have different days with our menu. So our Tuesdays and Thursdays are Filipino days. So that means we have Filipino special plates. And then on Wednesdays and Fridays, it's Hawaii. It's only Hawaiian. Okay. We still serve our basic plates daily, but when it comes to dinner, once again, it's different. And hopefully, once COVID is over, we can have our live performance again, and our music, have our annual luau, and then have our events again, like Kamayan, which we do for the Valentine's Day. We have lumpia wrapping class. But we are excited to like send out new items because again, I'm the dessert person, so I make different desserts. And mm -hmm. come back if you missed your dessert, or talk to us. We'll bring those items again. But we're hoping just COVID is almost over. But come and visit us because we have tons of food and we give those big portions. So you never go hungry. We always have the food. <laughs> <laughs> and and I believe it. And if nobody else gets anything from this. Big portions for sure. Because and we have something for everyone. So yes. if you're vegetarian, let us know. If you're gluten free, we got that. I'm sorry you're gluten free because there's other great stuff with gluten in it. Yes, but we yeah. have all these dishes available and we're very accommodating to your needs. We just don't have alcohol. That's the only thing we don't have. <laughs> yeah, and that's okay. That's okay. You got it with all the food, so you've got it covered. It's awesome. That's an extra license Nebraska charges us. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Well, the same thing. I think in every state you're gonna you're gonna get you know stuck with that yes. liquor mm -hmm. license, and that's like a whole nother a yep. can of worms. <laughs> yep. It's crazy. Sure. I also worked in a hotel, and the licenses we had to go get. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so Jen, do you remember Jen? Jen. Yep, Jennifer. She said, oh my gosh. She's like, I saw Corey when she was like three years old. I feel old. Now, also, Jen is younger than I am. So again, I must be ancient like grandma. No, 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 no. You're not too, too yet. You're fine. <laughs> well, hi, oh my Auntie God. Jen. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hilarious. All right. So just for fun, we're going to wrap mm -hmm. things up. Thank you again for coming on, but of we're going to do a speed round. So this is okay. again just for fun. So our speed round, um, we just do fun questions and you know you answer as you go, right? So what's your favorite dish from the restaurant? Yours, oh, not your mom's. My favorite, there's a lot that I really love, but my ultimate favorite has to be lechon because mom doesn't make that often enough. So ah, yeah. lechon is the roasted pig. It's mm -hmm. so unhealthy, but the skin is the best and mom makes it with garlic fried rice. I love garlic fried rice. Mm -hmm. So the fattiness of the pork with the meat and the crispy skin is so good. And then we serve it with lumpia, which I call like the Filipino French fries because I can eat more than one. <laughs> so that is my ultimate favorite plate. Awesome. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's uh, Uncle Juan's uh, favorite plate too. Oh, it's so yeah, good. Yeah, he loves pork kitchen. Okay, so um, this is not for me. This is, um, I'm doing this for a friend. <clears throat> so for a friend, how do you chop celery for pancit? Uh, so I don't <laughs> chop it, but it's called the Julian cut. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I guess it's the angle cut of the celery. I just mm -hmm. eat it. But yes, it is a cel it's a celery cut. I believe it's uh, the Julian cut for the, both the celery and the carrot. Mm -hmm. um, it's mom more she likes the fact that you have a bigger chunk of the carrots and the vegetables 
So that way, because our veg, ours is vegetarian. Our pancit has no meat in it unless you okay. want a special one. So the best way of getting like that different texture and having that flavor in it will be having those vegetables absorb the flavor and leaving it not too steamed up where it's like chewy. So we have more of a crunch to it. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, I just uh, this is for um, a Filipino friend of mine that. <laughs> She's like, uh, do you cut your your celery a certain way? Let's ask the experts. I'm just not going to say just anything. Just don't cube it. Just don't cube it. It's not the best. No, I know better, but it's just for, if she's watching, she knows who she is. There you go. A Chilean cut. Okay, so what's your favorite dessert? Oh, my goodness. Since you're the baker. Since you're the baker. See, I say, I try not to say my favorite because I don't like making it all the time. <laughs> but my favorite, and this is going to sound funny, but I do not like coconut. But I love halpia cream pie. Okay. So halpia cream pie is a coconut pudding on top of a crust. And it's like chocolate pudding on top with whipped cream and then chocolate shavings. Oh, I love it. I don't know why I actually like halpia when I hate coconut. I don't understand. I even hate caramel coconut, but I love the Samoa's uh, Girl Scout cookies. I don't, I don't understand why I love them. But it's one of my favorites. It just brings me back home. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, you can't find Hawaiian dessert here. Like there's no zippies here to just get desserts. So I got to make it myself. <laughs> <laughs> that I also make rarely. So it's mm -hmm. one of the things I really enjoy. I just love chocolate. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, it's funny that you mentioned the coconut issue, right? So Chance is the same way. He's all like, I don't like coconut. And then we took him to Guam and he starts eating all of that young coconut, every, all the desserts that had the young oh, coconut in it. And so he's like, I don't like the other coconut, the matured coconut, but the young coconut, he's like, oh, I really like this. Cause I'm like, you're eating coconut. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. <laughs> Yeah, I can't like I can't even eat the Quaker bars. I can take I can like feel the coconut in it. I'm like, oh great, there's coconut shavings in this. I can tell, and I can't eat it. But like I said, I can eat the Samoa cookies. I'll eat also butter mochi has coconut in it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll eat that. It's it's weird. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I love I love coconut, so it's all good. Okay, so what's your hardest dish to prepare? Oh my goodness, I feel like so we have a lot of dishes that take a long time. For mm -hmm. sure. For instance, mm -hmm. a cool pork can take days to make. So, because it has to smoke for a long time. But I say the hardest dish we have to make is simply like getting a chicken right. For instance, being in a restaurant, you have like the commercial um, stove, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you want to do like fully, fully chicken, you have to grill it. But sometimes mm -hmm. you just can't grill with this humidity. It's different. It's different every day. Right. I thought Hawaii had bipolar weather. That is not true. So, like, just perfecting the grilling, anything grilling, I think would be like our chicken. Like, you want to make sure it's not raw, but at the same mm -hmm. time, you want it that good, smoky flavor, not leave it in too long for it to be dry. But for some reason, humidity here is insane. <laughs> and okay. humidity here is not the same. <laughs> like, gotcha. So it, because it's landlocked, so it's a little different, right? Yes. And mm -hmm. it's funny because when I moved here, they're like, oh, the humidity is so high. I'm like, I don't I don't feel sweaty. This is not humidity. What are you guys talking about? But the food can tell. Like, oh, you're just like, no. Oh, no. <laughs> but mom will probably say otherwise because sometimes I'm not the one grilling. I'm just gotcha. the one assisting. <laughs> gotcha. So, gotcha. Mm -hmm. But no, that's good. That's good. Well, thank you guys so much. And if you're in Nebraska, check out Ono Pene Kitchen and um, just get a little aloha while you're in Nebraska for sure. And visit our friends, visit Corey and Maria and the whole entire family and they'll definitely treat you well. And, you know, it'll be just like home. Yes, we're going to treat you just like Ohana. So. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you. It was so nice to see you. And again, nice for my to folks. Too, oh, definitely. <laughs> and for those that are watching on Facebook, if you have not checked out my YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel under Simoy Tovez and hit the bell for all of our um, announcements and things that are upcoming. And we will see you guys next week. So take care. Bye. Bye. Mahalo.